Our Brucey Point Cooperative, as you are aware, is a very unique environment. It's a very unique place and I think we all understand how important this is to our family and to our community. Our neighbors are really our friends and our friends just happen to be our neighbors. We look out for each other. Um, kids frolic and have fun on the beach. I remember on the Bayside um, my father taking me and teaching me how to swim when I was seven years old. Uh, my grandfather had originally bought into the cooperative in 1956. And we all became a community of friends and um, it's safe here. But the overwhelming factor is that it is beautiful. We have a bay, we have an ocean, and we were blessed by God. When Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here on behalf of the Historical Society and how we became a historical society. It all came about because of Ruth C. Clark. Um, Ruth, as everyone knows, was very helpful and creative in the formation of the Breezy Point Cooperative in the 1960s. Besides being the secretary uh, in the office, Ruth began compiling a history of Breezy Point that the cooperative eventually asked her to put together into a book. Unfortunately, she was not able to complete the book, but the preface of, um, the preface of my book and the first couple of pages were extracted right out of the papers that I found when the cooperative gave me all the folders from Ruth Clark. So she had done a lot of work previously, compiling, uh, getting in touch with people, um, getting their photographs, their own personal history. All I really did is just put these articles and interviews into a book format and uh, Ruth is really to be credited as the first historian of the Breezy Point Cooperative. She My mother did a variety of things growing up. Uh, one thing, she used to dance in vaudeville. She was the member of a troupe called the Madcaps. And I have a lot of pictures of her dancing on the top of the roof of the Sugar Bowl when she was backing some political candidate in the point for some office that I have no idea which. She also was the private secretary of Condé Nast of Nast Publications and Vogue magazine, and she worked with Cecil Beaton, the artist, as his social secretary when he came up working for Mr. Nast in summers. She had a varied career. She worked for the Australian government. We moved to Washington, D.C., and she was chief of communications between the United States and Australia. She came back to New York, she held various jobs, and then the cooperative was formed and she stayed there for the last 30 years. A very varied life. My mother came to the point as a child with her family. They settled in the early 1900s in Roxbury in a bungalow that Johnny Roxbury built. Harold Reed, or Phil Reed, came to my uncle and asked him to take a site on Graham Place, 43 Graham Place. They built a home there, and the whole family lived there every summer. Did your mother know Phil Howard Reed? Can you talk a little bit about that? My mother knew Mr. Reed, and my uncle Henry and he were good friends. And they decided that he needed a site for the large family, and that's why he had suggested we move to 43. They moved to 43. Graham Place. We, they mother lived there with her two brothers and family until she met my father who lived at 37 Reed Avenue and they were married and then we moved to, they moved to 15 Bayside and my brother and I were born when we lived there and we stayed there every summer. My mother was very involved in the community. She became a block captain. She was in the uh, Rockaway Point Association. Later she became the president. She was very involved in so much in the community that when Mr. Austin came and decided to sell our land, decided to build on it, she and the other two associations got together along with the people of the point and they fought and they fought hard. 
They went to Washington, they went to Albany, newspapers, radio programs, they lobbied to get politicians down here so they could see we weren't just a sandbar but a community of people. And eventually we won the fight. That was in late 1960 and another incident happened called Donna and nearly destroyed us. The bay and the ocean met and we were mostly bungalows and it was devastation. My family and I went to the bungalow to see how it was and we lost the roof, the front porch, the front deck. Uh, you could stand in the living room and look at the water. My fondest memory of this time was we were looking at the devastation around us and my mother cleared away the table and sat down and she met with a gentleman named John Hale who was one of the attorneys and they sat down, the two of them, and wrote the outline of which would become the Breezy Point Cooperative. The cooperative was formed, my mother worked there, she was there over 30 years as office manager and secretary. During this time she formed the Teen Show, a place for young tweens and teens to meet, show their talent and put a show on for the community. She was tireless in her community, she loved everyone, she met everyone, she knew everyone, and she loved this place. She retired when she was 83 years old, and while in retirement, somebody said to her, do you want to go to Florida with all the snowbirds? And her answer was, why would I ever leave Breezy Point? Thank you. For My mother was a reader. She read everything she could get her hands on. She was a listener. Nothing ever got by her, and she had an amazing memory. She was quiet at times, but then when someone would sp speak about something, she knew everything about it. She joined everything. She knew everybody. She loved being here. She loved helping people, but she did it quietly. She never wanted to be in the forefront. She didn't want to be the one in the front. She wanted to be in the background. She wanted to assist. She wanted to help. She wanted to add, and she was a wonderful, wonderful mother. But she had a heart of gold, she loved people, and she loved family. I mean, there was nothing she would really do, but when you were spoken to, you better listen. I mean, she raised nine children. Uh, it wasn't easy. Plus dedicating her, her, her place in Breezy Point as a volunteer in the fire department. She just loved people and met the memory on her. I mean, she's 101 today and still, when I, when I can't remember somebody's name, I call her up on the phone. I said, Mom, what is this name? And she remembers. She's, got a, uh, she's an amazing person. She's got a drive on her that's, uh, I mean, I idolize her. She's nothing but the best. Perfect. Thank you. Well, my mother bought in 29, and we came this, in this winter because the bungalows were reasonable then in the fall. So she bought in the fall, and we spent our summers in 1930 was my first summer. Wow. Into the, my original home in 1953, that's the Rockaway Point Fire Department's old firehouse in 1953, and I've been there ever since. And you have a unique address, right? Huh? It's 79, 79 and a half? Oh, oh and yes, half. sure, because there was no running water in the, the home that my mother purchased, and there was no bathrooms. We had outhouses we had to use, and uh, you, no gas and electricity. We had oil burners, oil stoves, and we cooked by our oil and we kerosene. We had to go by the kerosene. A barge used to come into the dock on the bay side, and we go with the wagon and the can and purchase the the uh, kerosene to maintain the utensils. You know the the, the cooking facilities. Yeah. And where did you get the water from? We pumped water from, uh, pumps were on the end of every walk. We went and pumped water from those pails of water. 
He had a pump oil. And my dad being a plumber, we were the first bungalow to have a live-in bathroom. A he did away with the outhouse <laughs> and he decided he'd go dig a hole and he bought a barrel and they pierced a barrel and that's what they used. It said, that was called a cesspool. Right. It was a, a, a big, big barrel and they pierced the barrel, made holes in it and buried it in the sand and they had a running pipe from the toilet and the basin. We didn't have a bathtub. We had just a little basin and a toilet and that led into this barrel for the waste. Right. Now you've been here for 85 years. What's kept you here in Breezy so long? Huh? What has kept you here in Breezy for so long? What kept? Yeah. Well, it was ideal. There was, you know, no heavy transportation, not worried about kids running the streets. And uh, the bus came in to pick the children up to go to school. And we didn't have mail carry. We had boxes out at Fort Tilden. We had to go pick up our mail. It was a little inconvenience, but uh, we put up with the inconvenience for what we have for today. And I'm very happy with the arrangements that I have right now. I was hit with Sandy for a little bit, not too much damage, because I, my boys, I have sons, and they took care of the house and put the house back together for me after Sandy. And I, I was involved in the Rockaway Point. My husband and I were involved in the Rockaway Point Fire Department. We were volunteers, and my husband was part of the organizing the ambulance call. And we all took chances, and you know we worked around them. And how long were you a member of the ambulance corps? Okay. How many years? Seventy did, years. Seventy years service, huh? Well, I'm a lifetime member. Right. I was seventy years active with the Rockaway Point Fire Department Ambulance Corps. I have. I'm here to talk about Julia Ryan and the Rockaway Point Volunteer Fire Department. Julia Ryan, along with her mother, her father and her husband, all active members in the volunteer since 1940. Uh, well, the, the, hus the husband and the, and the father were active even before then, but in 1940, the women petitioned the fire department to form a ladies auxiliary. When they formed that ladies auxiliary, mom and grandma both became active members of the fire department, were taught the firematics and firefighting techniques because the men were going, we're going to have a lack of manpower, all the men going to war. Uh, they, they did that for five years, and then they returned, when the men returned from the war, the women felt like they didn't have a place, but they, they knew there was a need for an ambulance corps down there. So they formed an ambulance corps, both purchased the first ambulance. My dad became one of the first instructors, along with a couple other men, and they taught the first aid to all the men and women and formed that ambulance and rescue corps. A wonderful thing, they saved many a life, delivered many a baby. Their love of this community and still goes on today. The volunteers, they're wonderful. And mom and dad and my grandparents were a initial and a, and a part of what, what, what is established today, you know? Oh, when we, we were born and raised, well, I was raised in the old firehouse on Reed and Market Street. Mom still lives in there today at 101. The building was built in 1909. Mom was born in 1916. So the building's a couple of years older than mom. Thank you. <laughs>